adventure riding when I was talking about the kind of gear we wear the jackets but if you're gonna get stupid if you're actually gonna go on the trail if you're gonna push your limits riding in adventure boots or adventure riding gear is not enough you've got to have the right stuff so I'm gonna show you I'm gonna do a little strip tease here and show you what's underneath all of the gear that I'm wearing to start off with I am wearing the uh, the Moscow the pants I didn't wear the jacket today because it was warm it wasn't that wet out but I do have the overpants on here's what's underneath I have the armor here uh, the elbow armor, which is just an inexpensive armor. It's about oh, $20 or so. And what I'm looking for is to make sure that it's got plenty of padding. It's got hard protection on the outside. I'm not going to just wear some armor that floats around in the jacket. The problem is this. If I fall down on the trail, if that can move around, it's not always in the right spot. So I need to make sure that it's tied to or tight on my arms. So that's what I'm going to have underneath my elbows. I wear a neck brace because I like to wipe my own rear end and you won't appreciate that until you realize somebody else has to do it for you. And that's what the collar is for. The first time you put one on, you're going to feel like it's restrictive. It's only until you get accustomed to it. This is worth it. So I wear a full collar every time I go out in the dirt to push the limits. The, the chest armor I have here is the Liette brace. The layup brace I wear because it's the only chest armor that has a CE rating. Most of the guards that you buy that are dirt bike are just roost guards. It's just the guy in front of you that's kicking out a bunch of rocks. doesn't pelt you in the chest and hurt you. So this has impact protection. Also, I like the elbows or the shoulders that have some movement. And unlike the elbow where I'm worried about it impacting and shifting, with the shoulder, I like to have some shift so that when I impact, it's not a direct hit. I don't prefer the, the jackets that you pull on over the top. So I'm a huge fan of that. Now, as far as pants go, if you come in, or boots go, if you come in a little bit closer, you'll see I am not wearing adventure boots. These are Tech 7s. They're one of my recommendations for adventure riders who are getting into riding. They're very comfortable. They're small enough at the shin that you can get pants over the top, but they're an actual off-road advent or off-road boot. If you have an adventure boot, if you like walking around in it, it's the wrong boot. It should not be comfortable. It needs to be stiff. It needs to restrict movement because if you come off one of these on a trail, it's gonna make a mess out of things. The pants that I'm wearing, just give, give me an idea. The reason I'm wearing the Moscow pants is they have a huge amount of venting. And one of the early mistakes you'll find if you go off road is you dress warm because it's cold out, but after about three turns, you're actually too hot. All right, now let's get excited. Underneath these, these are just a shell. So they have waterproof. And the other thing about the pants that I'm really uh, a big, that I think is a big deal off road is this inside panel right here needs to be leather. And see, leather is really the only thing that sticks to the bike that gives you good grip. If you have nylon on the inside, which are inexpensive, or a lot of your, your street bias riding gear will have nylon and that'll wear through but also gets really slick it moves around this way I don't have to add any sticky stuff to the bike so I do like that on the inside 
The knee guards that I'm wearing are not just a knee protection. These are articulated knee braces. Uh, when you think about the amount of injury you can take uh, coming off off-road, it's really quite worth it. Otherwise, you definitely need very full coverage all the way down the shin, all the way up the, the leg at the top. And let's go and pop these off real quick. I'll show you kind of some more stuff. All right, now, the other, uh, the other part of armor that I wear underneath are, these are just a, a padded short. These have armor protection, especially on the hip and on the sides, but it's the butt that matters the most. I've got a protection that rides right up here on my tailbone. This will keep me, if the bike does buck up and hit you in the, in the tailbone, it can break your tailbone. And that early on is not unlikely to occur. The other problem with these big adventure bikes their suspension is not like a dirt bike. They can't absorb the same bumps. They're more likely to buck and jump. Even if you turn up your rebound as much as possible, they're just a lot of weight and not much suspension. So having that, that tailbone protection is a, a good idea. These are waterproof socks. Uh, most off-road boots, in fact, as far as I know, all off-road boots are not waterproof, and that's a good thing. It allows you to sweat through. It helps them stay cool. But the waterproof socks are going to help you uh, just keep your feet a little more comfortable throughout the ride. My gloves are not going to be a heavy armored street glove. I'm not worried about leather. I'm not sliding down the road. If I'm on the trail, I want something flexible. These have a little bit of insulation, but you're, you're going to get really warm really fast on the trail. So it's not that big a deal as far as that goes and i think i've got everything i've got a borrowed shirt because i fell down in a puddle today there you go oh uh the one other thing i have been doing because i'm coming from adventure right you'll see i'm wearing an adventure helmet but also uh for today i'm not wearing goggles goggles are really ideal if you're going to be in sandy or dusty or heavy wind conditions that way you're not getting it into the eyes today it was damp it was nice and wet perfect perfect traction out here and my biggest thing was I was worried about rocks kicking up mud sticks things like that so I ended up using a, a set of safety glasses or, or these are the arc lights that I wear and they're very they have a lot of protection all the way up against the brow all the way down to the cheek so things can't get around them and they work very well unless you're in the dust also they uh, when I fogged up, it was only about 35 feet and they were clear every single time. So these are a great option if you don't want to wear a full goggle. Also, goggles can be really difficult to fit to an adventure helmet and they can be really hot. The other thing that happens when you're riding the big adventure bikes off-road is you're often not getting a lot of speed. And goggles require airflow to stay clear. And if you're riding slow, that can be a problem. So that's why I've switched over to using glasses instead of goggles most of the time. There you go. It's the only strip show that I've ever done on YouTube. Congratulations. And uh, from here on out, it's going to get a little bit uh, kinky, so we should probably turn the camera off and uh, see how things go.